Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Ashok. This video is the part of Velocity Omni Studio interview preparation series where I already have created one video which covers introduction or basic interview questions. So if you want to learn those questions, then check out that video and you can find link in description. And today in this video, we will see questions related to data raptors and we will try to cover almost all the questions which can be asked into interviews. Okay, so let's start with today's first question that is what are data raptors? So as we have seen in last video, data raptors are the part of service management layer. And if you want to work with Salesforce database into Omni Studio, like if you want to read, insert or update data, then generally we use data raptors. And data raptors help us to perform DML or SQL operations only with declarative approach. I mean without writing single line of code or query. And we have four kind of data raptors. First is turbo extract, extract, load and transform. So in nutshell, data raptors mainly used to communicate with Salesforce database. Okay. Now let's first talk about turbo extract. So if you want to read data from single object, then we should use Turbo Extract Data Raptor because this is simple and very good in runtime performance as well. But here we can't use formula and custom field mapping. Custom field mapping means we can set field aliasing or output JSON structure, but that is not possible in Turbo Extract. Now let me open my org and give you the quick refresh so you can get it easily and remember for long time. Alright, so here I already have created one Turbo Extract Data Raptor and you can see here we have three tabs, Extract, Options and Preview. So in this Extract tab, we need to select object from which we want to face the data. So I have selected account here and here we need to set the JSON output path and we can add filters here. And here in this section, we need to select fields which we want to have in response. So I have selected two fields name and website and ID is default. Okay. And you can notice here, we don't have any option to add more objects because it supports only one object. But what about related objects? Then you can see we have a related objects option here in which you can select parent objects from here. Like if you want to select account owner, then select this account.owner. Now in this field section, you will see related object fields. So let me filter name and move it to right side. Okay. So this is how we can select data from parent objects till five level. But what about child objects? Like if you want to select account contacts, then what is the option here? Then you can see here, we don't have any option to select data from child objects in Turbo Extract Data Raptor. Okay. And this preview tab is used to test the data raptor and we can provide input parameters here in key value pair and then we can click on this execute button and if everything is fine then we will get response here including what all fields we have selected in extract tab and in this debug log section we can see query which was internally made by omni studio based on our selection so in nutshell turbo extract can help us to read data from only one object or their parent objects and why and when we should use it because it is simple just we have to select object and their fields and runtime performance is also very good so if we have a requirement to select data from only single object then we should use turbo extract data raptor okay so i think now you have clear picture of turbo extract data raptor now let's move on next question which says can we select data from related objects as well in Turbo Extract? So I think we already have discussed about it that we can select data only from parent objects, not from child objects. Okay. Now let's discuss about Extract Data Raptor. So we can say Extract Data Raptor help us to read data from one or more objects and it supports formulas and complex field mapping as well. So we can set field aliasing and output JSON structure as per our requirement. And in extract data raptor, 
We can also select data from related objects like from parent and child both. For example, let's say you want to get accounts list with their respective contacts and also you want account owner name with account details. Then we can achieve this using extract data raptor. And I already have created one data raptor for demo purpose. So let me open that. Alright, so here you can see we have five tabs and in this extract tab, we can define our objects from which we want to select data and can set output path. So I have added account and contact object. Okay, now next tab is formulas. So here we can add any kind of Salesforce formula if required. So for demo purpose, I have added concat formula to get full name and set result path. And here you can add more formulas if required by clicking on this add formula button. And next we have output tab. So in extract tab, we only define objects, but what all fields we need to select that we define in output tab. And also we can define what JSON structure we want. And we can do manipulation and set field aliasing here. Like instead of name, you want to say account name. Then you can do such kind of things here. Okay, and this preview tab is helpful to test our data raptor. And here we can provide input parameters for testing and can click on this execute button. Now you can see account list with their contact list. Okay. So I think now you got fair idea about extract data raptor. Now next we have, can we select data from multiple objects in extract data raptor? Then answer is yes, we can select data from parent and child both in extract data raptor. And also we can select data from multiple non-related objects. Okay. Next we have, can we read metadata settings in data raptors? Then answer will be yes, we can read metadata settings using both extract and turbo extract data raptors. As like we are selecting as objects data. Okay. Now let's talk about load data raptor. So extract and turbo extract help us to select records from Salesforce database. But if you want to insert or update data, then load data raptor will help us. So let me show you this in org. So this is my demo load data raptor and load also have five tabs. And first tab is objects in which we select objects in which we want to insert the data. So I have selected contact here and next tab is formula. So if you require to add any kind of formula before record save, then you can use this formula tab. And next is fields. So here we need to define mappings, like which property value will save in which field of object. And in options tab, we have some options like ignore errors, roll back on error, use assignment rules, override target for all null inputs. Okay. And next is preview. So this is generally we use to test the data raptor. And here in this input section, we need to provide our test input JSON. And once we click on this execute button, then our data raptor will execute. And we'll show inserted record ID here. Okay. Now next we have, can we insert data into multiple or related objects using load data raptor? Then we can say yes, using load data raptor, we can insert data in multiple objects as well, either they are related or not. So let me show you in my org. So this is my another load demo data raptor. And here you can see I have selected two objects, account and contact. And if you want to make relation, then you can define link here. Like I'm saying, contact.account ID will be linked to the account.id. Okay. So while record insertion, data raptor will automatically create relationship between these objects. And here we can add more objects by clicking on this add object button. 
and in this field section we can see multiple sub tabs like for account and contacts so we can define fields for all the selected objects like i have defined account name here for account object and for contact object i have defined first name last name and user id okay so in nutshell we can insert data into multiple objects using load data adapter okay now next we have how to upset data in load data adapter using external id so we can say by checking upside key checkbox in field mapping so let me show you in org so here in this field section let's open any field mapping then here in this bottom part you can see a checkbox upside key so we can check this checkbox with any external id or unique value column then what data raptor will do it will check if any record available in object with the same value then it will update the record else it will insert new record okay and one more checkbox we have here is required for upset so if we check this checkbox then it will prevent a record from being updated if this field is null so by checking this checkbox simply we are just making this field mandatory to update record okay now next we have what is the use of is lookup option in load data adapter okay now let's discuss a scenario let's say you want to save user email address in contact email address but in input data you have only user id not email address now what you have to do on the basis of user id you have to extract user email address then you will save that email address to contact email address right so generally you have to do this exercise manually like you have to write query to get email address by passing user id but in data raptor you can achieve this requirement by only point and click so let me show you how we can do it so you can see here i'm passing user id as input and in fields mapping here we have a checkbox is lookup so with the help of this we can query and save data from another object so here in lookup object we need to define from which object we want to select data so i have selected user here and in lookup field we need to define the field by which we need to query the data so i have added id here so it is something like where condition i am adding id in condition with user id and in lookup requested field we can specify which field we want to query so i have selected email here so finally what we are doing here we are getting user email address and saving that into contact email address okay so in that cell we can say with the help of is lookup option we can query and save data from another object okay now next we have can we delete records using data raptor then answer will be no we can't delete data using data raptors we can only insert and update data not delete and if you want to delete data in omni studio then we can use integration procedures or omni scripts okay now let's discuss about transform data raptor so we can say this is a special kind of data raptor which doesn't deal with salesforce database operations i mean it is not used to communicate with salesforce database but it is only used to transform data from one format to another for example let's say you have a json object which have data of both account and contact objects now i want two different objects for account and contact details then we can use transform data raptor so let's see in org so in transform data raptor we have four tabs formula transforms options and preview so formula is the same which we have seen in the past examples like if you want to calculate some values by using formula then you can define your formula here and next is transforms 
So this is the main tab here in which we configure everything. So here we have two sections input JSON path and output JSON path. So here I have defined and separated contact and account details like account name key should be the part of account object. So I have written account colon name and similarly first name and last name should go into the contact object. So I have written here contact column first name and contact column last name and website should go into the account object. Okay. Now let's preview it. So as an input, I am providing account name, website, first name and last name as a single object. And once I'll click on this execute button, then in response, you will get two objects, account and contact. Okay. So this is the one use case, which I showed you here. But we can use transform data raptor in many other ways like you want to transform your object into list or vice versa or let's say you have a JSON and you want to convert that into XML or maybe the vice versa case then you can use this transform data raptor okay now next we have can we call data raptor in apex class then answer is yes we can call any kind of data raptor in apex class like we can call load extract turbo extract and transform data raptor in apex class and here you can see the example so i have stored my data raptor name in this string variable and here in this dr global dot process method we can provide our input parameters and data raptor name then it will automatically call our data raptor and return as dr process result as a output and here I'm converting that response into JSON and I'm printing that in debug log. So you can see this is what I get in debug logs like accounts, then account details, then contacts. Okay. So in nutshell, we can call our data raptor in Apex classes using this DR global dot process method. Okay. And one more thing is here. Can we call our data raptor using REST APIs? then that is also possible like this will be the endpoint for our data raptor like services apex rest then the namespace name namespace can be omni studio or velocity cmt then v2 then data raptor then name of the data raptor and then after we can provide any input parameters if required okay now next we have can we call apex class method into data raptor then we can say yes we can call apex class method into data raptor as well using function formula and i already have created a separate detail video on this topic so you can refer that video for more details and you can find link in description okay so that's it for this video in which we have covered questions related to data raptors few scenario based questions are also there i will cover them into a separate video and in next video we will cover questions related to integration procedures. So please subscribe my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching. I will see you in next video.